April 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ruth chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. During the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land of Judah. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah went to live as a resident foreigner in the region of Moab along with his wife and two sons. Now the man's name was Elimelech, his wife was Naomi, and his two sons were Malin and Kilian. They were of the clan of Ephrath from Bethlehem in Judah. They entered the region of Moab and settled there. Some time later, Naomi's husband, Elimelech, died, so she and her two sons were left alone. So her sons married Moabite women. One was named Orpah and the other Ruth, and they continued to live there about ten years. Then Naomi's two sons, Malin and Kilian, also died, so the woman was left all alone, bereaved of her two children as well as her husband. So she decided to return home from the region of Moab, accompanied by her daughters-in-law, because while she was living in Moab, she had heard that the Lord had shown concern for his people, reversing the famine by providing abundant crops. Now as she and her two daughters-in-law began to leave the place where she had been living to return to the land of Judah, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Listen to me. Each of you should return to your mother's home. May the Lord show you the same kind of devotion that you have shown to your deceased husbands and to me. May the Lord enable each of you to find security in the home of a new husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept loudly. But they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi replied, Go back home, my daughters. There is no reason for you to return to Judah with me. I am no longer capable of giving birth to sons who might become your husbands. Go back home, my daughters, for I am too old to get married again. Even if I thought there was hope that I could get married tonight and conceive sons, surely you would not want to wait until they were old enough to marry. Surely you would not remain unmarried all that time. No, my daughters, you must not return with me, for my intense suffering is too much for you to bear, for the Lord is afflicting me. Again they wept loudly. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung tightly to her. So Naomi said, Look, your sister-in-law is returning to her people and to her God. Follow your sister-in-law back home. But Ruth replied, Stop urging me to abandon you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will become my people, and your God will become my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I do not keep my promise. Only death will be able to separate me from you. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped trying to dissuade her. So the two of them journeyed together until they arrived in Bethlehem. When they entered Bethlehem, the whole village was excited about their arrival. The women of the village said, Can this be Naomi? But she replied to them, Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, because the Sovereign One has treated me very harshly. I left here full, but the Lord has caused me to return empty-handed. Why do you call me Naomi, seeing that the Lord has opposed me, and the Sovereign One has caused me to suffer? So Naomi returned, accompanied by her Moabite daughter-in-law Ruth, who came back with her from the region of Moab. Now they arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side of the family named Boaz. He was a wealthy, prominent man from the clan of Elimelech. One day Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the field so I can gather grain behind whoever permits me to do so. Naomi replied, You may go, my daughter. So Ruth went and gathered grain in the fields behind the harvesters. Now she just happened to end up in the portion of the field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Now at that very moment Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. May the Lord be with you. They replied, May the Lord bless you. 
Boaz asked his servant in charge of the harvesters, To whom does this young woman belong? The servant in charge of the harvesters replied, She's the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the region of Moab. She asked, May I follow the harvesters and gather grain among the bundles? Since she arrived, she has been working hard from this morning until now, except for sitting in the resting hut a short time. So Boaz said to Ruth, Listen carefully, my dear. Do not leave to gather grain in another field. You need not go beyond the limits of this field. You may go along beside my female workers. Take note of the field where the men are harvesting and follow behind with the female workers. I will tell the men to leave you alone. When you are thirsty, you may go to the water jars and drink some of the water the servants draw. Ruth knelt before him with her forehead to the ground and said to him, Why are you so kind and so attentive to me, even though I am a foreigner? Boaz replied to her, I have been given a full report of all that you have done for your mother-in-law following the death of your husband, how you left your father and your mother as well as your homeland and came to live among people you did not know previously. May the Lord reward your efforts. May your acts of kindness be repaid fully by the Lord God of Israel, from whom you have sought protection. She said, You really are being kind to me, sir, for you have reassured and encouraged me, your servant, even though I am not one of your servants. Later, during the mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come here and have some food. Dip your bread in the vinegar. So she sat down beside the harvesters. Then he handed her some roasted grain. She ate until she was full and saved the rest. When she got up to gather grain, Boaz told his male servants, Let her gather grain even among the bundles. Don't chase her off. Make sure you pull out ears of grain for her and drop them so she can gather them up. Don't tell her not to. So she gathered grain in the field until evening. When she threshed what she had gathered, it came to about 30 pounds of barley. She carried it back to town, and her mother-in-law saw how much grain she had gathered. Then Ruth gave her the roasted grain she had saved from mealtime. Her mother-in-law asked her, Where did you gather grain today? Where did you work? May the one who took notice of you be rewarded. So Ruth told her mother-in-law, with whom she had worked, she said, The name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be rewarded by the Lord, because he has shown loyalty to the living on behalf of the dead. Then Naomi said to her, This man is a close relative of ours. He is our guardian. Ruth the Moabite replied, He even told me, You may go along beside my servants until they have finished gathering all my harvest. Naomi then said to her daughter-in-law, Ruth, it is good, my daughter, that you should go out to work with his female servants. That way you will not be harmed, which could happen in another field. So Ruth worked beside Boaz's female servants, gathering grain until the end of the barley harvest, as well as the wheat harvest. After that, she stayed home with her mother-in-law. God, you know that this is my probably my favorite book in the Bible. In just four short chapters, there are so many amazing themes in this short story about a woman named Ruth. And many people think it's a love story between her and Boaz. And a lot of women will go, oh, I want a man like Boaz. And yes, I, I agree on the surface, it's a love story, but it's it's more about your love story with us. Um, and I get really excited because we get to finish this tomorrow. Um, and everyone listening gets to hear the whole story. And, and maybe they'll go back and listen to them back to back because Ruth is just such an awesome, powerful story to listen to. One of my favorite parts of this entire book of Ruth is... When Orpah decides to go back to her family, uh, Naomi's given her okay for it. Uh, and women back then had a completely different type of lifestyle than women nowadays do. We're incredibly blessed. But back then, if they didn't have a husband and or a family to take care of them, th there was nothing else for them. There was no way for them to earn a living um, except through illegal means. 
they couldn't own land back then uh, truly without a man or a family uh, they possibly would die and uh, that's what Naomi is telling them you are at least of an age where you could continue to have kids go back to your family so that they can remarry you to somebody else because if you come with me there's there's no hope in fact on top of it you're Moabite women <laughs> no offense but you're Moabite women uh, you come from a land where you worship a, a God who wants children to be sacrificed to him um, so yeah if you come back with me you'll have less than nothing and in fact we'll probably both die so Orpah decides to go back and Naomi even says she's going back to her family and to her God but Ruth doesn't in the true act of love and we see love in so many nuances in this chapter in this in, in this entire book we see the the love between Ruth and Boaz we definitely see obviously your love throughout this whole thing God but we also see the love that you keep trying to get us to understand, which is to love someone else more than we love ourselves, to love somebody else enough to put their needs ahead of us. And Ruth loved Naomi so much that she didn't want Naomi to have to go back by herself. And no matter what was going to happen to Ruth, Ruth was going to take care of her. Ruth was about to enter a place that was probably going to be pretty hostile to her. Ruth was back going back to a place where there was no place for them to live, no place for them to eat. And she was turning her back on a house, a family, a food, possibly a husband by not returning to her people. Ruth loved Naomi so much that she was willing to give up everything she wanted for what Naomi needed. And in the middle of that road on their way back, Ruth professes her love to you, God. Stop urging me to abandon you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will become my people. And your God will become my God. Ruth and her heart were completely changed on that dusty road headed back home. She gave her heart completely over to you, God. And we know how serious she was about this because she made an oath to you. And back then, oaths meant something completely different than what they do now. She made an oath to you. And an oath to Naomi. Now, interestingly enough, we also see a little bit different facet of love. We see a martyrdom love. Um, I have a few people in my life that are like Naomi. Don't call me Naomi, call me Mara because God is punishing me. I don't know why he's punishing me, but he's punishing me and woe is me. <laughs> Naomi. <laughs> God, I, I used to be a lot like Naomi. I used to be such an incredibly negative person. My dad, I remember my dad always getting after me about always looking at the bad in everything and now when things seem to go wrong or um, things I mean just having one of those type of days or one of those types of weeks uh, I actually kind of get a little bit excited now uh, because it's usually happening for one or two reasons one you're about to teach me something and and it may be because I did something wrong it may be because I did something right but you're about to teach me something uh, and I love those moments between us um, or the flip side is I'm making Satan mad. Uh, I'm on the right track. I'm doing what, what I'm supposed to be doing as God's child. And I'm riling up the feathers of Satan. And if that's why that stuff's happening, that's crazy awesome. <laughs> he can get riled up all he wants. Uh, nothing is going to stop me from the ministry that you've given me, God. From my love uh, with you, to you because of you nothing nothing's going to stop that so uh, Naomi's kind of in a little bit different space in her love relationship with you she has more of a love hate relationship with you woe is me I had so much I had sons I had a husband um, 
But what she doesn't know yet is you're about to provide for her more than her husband or sons could ever provide for, for her. Just so many layers of love in this story, God, which is absolutely amazing. I get really excited for the next part because we learn a lot about what obedience looks like in a love relationship, in a relationship with you, in a relationship with a spouse, uh, even in relationships with other people. God, I just pray that maybe people will open up their Bibles today and just sit down and, and read Ruth cover to cover, you know, the whole four chapters it is. And uh, every time I read that story, I get more and more out of it. God, thank you. Thank you for your amazing love. Thank you for the incredible examples that you show us in the, in the Bible. Thank you for giving us so many different kinds of people who are going through different situations. Some people are going to identify with Oprah. They're just not ready yet, and they're going to turn their back on, on your love. Uh, other people are going to be like Naomi. <sighs> yeah, I've been going to church for 42,000 years, and <sighs> God just doesn't like me right now, and woe is me. And then other people are going to be Ruth, and let's go. Let's figure this out. Let's do this. I love you. Let's go. Wherever you go. I will go. God, thank you so much. I love you very much. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>